I believe that somebody's testimony this morning that Lord you brought me from a mighty mighty long way come on let's praise the Lord for the ministry of music this morning and beloved with that being said on this coming Saturday amen St. Paul is providing the music during the noonday worship service so we're calling on all choirs, including the male chorus, amen, and the praise team to be here at 11.30 a.m. And the people of God said, amen. Amen. Ask that you would continue to remember our sick and shut-in brother, Roderick McClaskin, amen. Sister Bessie Martin, our very own uh, brother Micah, and sister... Renee Nix, we are believing God for his healing power to manifest. Amen. Beloved, our scripture lesson comes from Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. A very familiar passage of scripture. I'm going to read the NIV before I read the message Bible, which is on the screen. Amen. Romans chapter 12, 1 through 2, verses 1 through 2 reads, and the NIV, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. But I want to read this in the Message Bible, which is on the screen. So here's what I want you to do. God helping you take your everyday ordinary life your sleeping eating going to work and walking around life and place it before God as an offering embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You will be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity God brings the best out of you develops well-formed maturity in you beloved for a little while uh, I want us to reflect on this thought uh, God's uh, hokey pokey uh -huh. That went over some of y'all head uh, and some of y'all already said, my God, where's she going with this? Amen. But, but God's uh -huh, uh, hokey pokey. Uh, beloved, let us pray. Father, I stand behind this sacred desk. Uh, once again realizing that I'm solely dependent upon you. I'm asking you God to anoint me afresh. Make the word plain that it may fall on fertile ground. But however you move God you will get the glory. Because it's not by might nor by power but by your spirit says the Lord of hosts. It's in Jesus name that I do pray and the people of God in agreement say Amen. Yes, beloved. God's uh, hokey, uh huh, 
pokey, uh huh. Beloved, this morning, I want you to recall your childhood days when you danced to the nursery rhyme, hokey, uh, pokey, uh, to entertain yourself. Now, I know some may be willing, but for those who are willing and able, I want us to take about 30 seconds, amen. I want you to stand to your feet if you will, and I want you to do, uh-huh, it don't have to be all, but just a few, amen, and do, come on y'all, uh, the hokey pokey, amen. You ready? Uh, it says you put your right arm in and you take your right arm out. You put your right arm in and you what? Shake it all about. You do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself. Come on, y'all, around. That's what it's all about. Come on, get your sales a hand. Get your sales a hand. Amen. You may be seated. Beloved, I, I believe uh, that this simple song... Uh, has a deeper message uh, that I would like for us to explore uh -huh, uh, this morning together. Uh, uh -huh, one foot in uh, and one foot out. Uh -huh, uh, one arm in and what? One arm out. Uh, halfway in and what? Halfway out. Uh -huh. You see, this simple uh, nursery rhyme uh, is representative uh, of our ability uh, to commit. Uh -huh. You see, it gives to us uh, a visible uh, demonstration of how uh, we commit. Uh -huh. You see, too often uh, we make decisions uh, without follow through. Uh, you see, we treat relationships. Uh, like contracts uh, with what escape clauses uh, we change jobs uh, with the seasons uh, winter spring uh, summer come on y'all and fall uh, we change our mind uh, every time there is a new moon uh, we make noise uh, and we get nowhere uh, they don't have it yet holy ghost uh, we have been planning on it uh, meaning to uh, wanting to uh, trying to uh, going to uh, aiming to uh, getting around to uh, fixing to uh, even hoping to uh, what am i trying to say uh, you got one foot in uh, and one foot out uh, you got one arm in uh, and one arm out uh, you halfway in uh, and you have way out you see, beloved, huh? too many of us, huh? Brother Gene, we, we, we want it all huh? without giving it huh? our all. Huh? In other words, we want prosperity huh? without hard work huh? and sacrifice. Huh? We want success huh? without failure. Huh? We want gain huh? without pain. Huh? We want a testimony huh? without a test. Huh? We want joy huh? without tears. Huh? We want character huh? without suffering. Huh? We want a relationship huh? without trust. Huh? We want it it all uh, without giving it our all we want all the benefits uh, with any of the commitment you see too many of us uh, we are playing uh, the hokey pokey uh, with our life uh, with our family uh, with our health uh, with our finances uh, and even with our relationship uh, with god why because we got one foot in and one foot out uh, we got one arm in and one arm out uh, halfway in and halfway out uh, so this morning uh, my message is not deep uh, but it's simple uh, if you want it all uh, then you have to give it your all and it takes uh, commitment 
So if you want, if you want career success, then it takes commitment. If you want that dilemma, that situation, or that predicament that you're in to change, then it's going to take commitment. All of my students, listen up. If you want some better grades in school, then it's going to take what? Commitment. If you want to lose some weight, Agnes, it's going to take commitment. If you want a close family, it's going to take commitment. If you want a relationship, with God through Jesus the Christ is going to take commitment. Oh, I'm talking about uh, that simple word, uh, c -c commitment, uh, dedication, uh, devotion, uh, allegiance, uh, loyalty, uh, responsibility, uh, obligation, uh, duty, uh, and above all what faithfulness. Uh, it takes commitment. If you want it all, then you got to give it your all. Beloved, in our scripture lesson. The Apostle Paul uh, is writing uh, to the church at Rome uh, and he is issuing uh, a call uh, for commitment. Uh, you see, he wants uh, the believers to know uh, that their pursuit uh, of God uh, does not stop with uh, salvation, uh, but you need to pursue uh, sanctification. Uh, in other words, uh, you need to pursue uh, becoming holy, uh, and that is a lifetime uh, pursuit, because uh -huh, that don't happen uh, overnight. Uh, as Methodists, we believe in the doctrine of perfection, but you're going to be perfected in that great getting up morning. You see, Paul, Paul is saying that in light of all that God has done for us, oh, let me press my claim, God gave us his only begotten son, Jesus, uh -huh, to make a sacrifice for the atonement of our sin. In other words, Jesus, he paid a sin debt that we could not pay. He saved our wretched soul he wiped the slate clean and he give us mercies new every morning and Paul is saying that the very least that we can do after all of what God has done for us the least we can do is commit at the very least we can be faithful and present ourselves in a manner to God that is holy and acceptable. You see, Paul, he acknowledges that salvation is a gift. In other words, you can't pay for it and you can't earn it. In fact, Paul told the church at Ephesus that for by grace that you have what, been saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is a gift from God I don't care how good you think you are every I you dot every T you cross if you don't have a saving faith in Jesus the Christ then you are simply not saved Amen. however a relationship I'm gonna mess them up now help me Holy Ghost a relationship with God requires commitment and a relationship with God requires reciprocity oh she said oh yes yeah, she did yes beloved reciprocity you see according to the psychology dictionary reciprocity is the act 
act or the process or situation in which one person has received a benefit from another and in return chooses to provide an equivalent benefit back. You gave me some, I'm going to give you some. But please believe that as descendants of slaves, we're still waiting for our 40 acres and a mule. What am I trying to say? We can never, never pay God back for all the that he's done for us. We can never repay God for the gift of salvation. We can never repay God, but we can choose to be committed. The Bible says, in view of God's mercy, offer your bodies, offer yourself, Offer your talent, offer your time, offer your tithes, offer yourself as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and what? Proper worship. Now I know uh, that there are those uh, under the sound of my voice that can testify uh, that when they understood uh, that their relationship with God uh -huh, uh, required uh, reciprocity, uh, when they began to faithfully render service uh, and work in the church, uh, perhaps sing in the choir, uh, Sister Tabitha, uh, join the usher board. Uh, Donna, come to church school, brother Jean, work with the youth, sister Annie, rearrange their schedule in order to give their time to ministry, uh, to lend a helping hand. In other words, when they begin to tithe and give sacrificially, when they begin to get in the word and turn from their wicked ways, when they begin to commit and faithfully offer for a spiritual act of worship that's when they realize that God is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that works in us beloved I just believe that there's some folk who can testify that he gives me health, he keeps me strong, he guides me when I would go wrong, that he gives me everything uh, that I need, uh, my ever hunger uh, he feeds. Uh, in other words, you can't beat uh, God's giving, uh, no matter, come on y'all, how uh, you try uh, and just as sure uh, as you are living uh, and the Lord uh, is in heaven on high, uh, that the more uh, you give, uh, the more he gives to you, uh, but keep uh, on giving uh, because uh, it's really true uh, that you can't be. You can't beat. Oh, I don't care how hard you try. You, you, you can't beat. I don't care how much money you got. You can't beat. I don't care how many letters behind your name. You cannot beat. I don't care how many followers you got in your social network. You cannot beat. Salvation is a gift but relationship with God requires reciprocity relationship with God requires commitment and my brothers 
and my sisters, too many of us are playing the hokey pokey with our relationship with God. Why? Because we got one foot in and one foot out. One arm in and one arm out. Halfway in and halfway out. Have we become conditioned to receiving without giving? Mm. What do you give back for all that you get? Beloved, you can't pay God, but you can make a decision to serve God. You can't pay God, but you can choose to be committed. Because when you are committed, you're willing to pay the price. I said it once, I said it twice, I said it again, that too many of us want it all without giving it to our all. So we settle. We settle for less than God's best. Look at your own life. Beloved, when is enough gonna be enough? You didn't like that. When is enough going to be enough? When will the pain of staying the same be greater than the pain of change? Whoa, they didn't get us to the Tabitha. Uh-huh, you standing there uh, in that same spot. Uh, keep complaining uh, day in and day out. Uh, and folk tired of hearing your same story. Because you're not in pain enough. Uh, you're not oppressed enough. Because uh, when it gets thick enough, uh, you're going to ask God to move uh, in your situation. Now, beloved, uh, I'm not suggesting uh, that it's easy because I don't have no Pollyanna attitude up in here because I know this thing kind of hard. Uh, but in times like these, uh, you know that you have tried everything else and come up short. Beloved, now it's time to try God. You see, let me tell you something. All you need to do is start with one step of faith. I didn't say nothing about running the whole race, Judge Pam. I said take one step of faith. And I know that one step may be the longest step that you've ever taken in your life. It may be the hardest step, but that one step, even though it may be the scariest, but if you don't hold out on God, don't you know that God, he will not hold out on you. My brothers and my sisters, take that step. Take that step of commitment. For the Bible says, commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust Him and He will help you. That's Psalms 37. He says that no good thing will He withhold from them that walk uprightly. That's Psalms 84 and 11. You see, it's easy to become relaxed when you're not committed. When we have one foot in the world and one foot uh, in the church, uh, when we're playing the whole if open, uh, but come on, y'all, one foot in, I ain't gonna let it go. One foot out, one arm in, one arm out, uh, halfway in, halfway out. Uh, and because we still want it all without giving it our all, we will attempt to serve God with our worldly values. We soon found out that when we try to serve God in the power of the flesh, that it leaves us discouraged, it leaves us disillusioned, and it leaves us downright frustrated. However, when you serve God, uh, 
in the power of a transformed life <laughs> and the power of a renewed mind uh, that it will bring out the best uh, in us because uh, Paul said uh, don't copy uh, the behavior uh, and the customs uh, of this world uh, but let God uh, transform you into a new person uh, by changing uh, the way that you think uh, then you will learn to know God's will for you which is good and pleasing and perfect uh, what am I trying to say that the only way to change change the way we think is to know how God thinks and we will get an idea of how God thinks by allowing his word to penetrate our heart see 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 they didn't get it notice beloved uh, I didn't say no God's word <laughs> I didn't say that I did not say no God's word because even Satan can, can quote the word of God but we need God in our heart so the demonstration of the word of God is through our actions so as I close ask yourself this question when was the last time you gave a hundred percent effort to God, your family, your career, your church. When was the last time that you gave it your all? How does giving a hundred percent of yourself look how could your life change if you gave God your all your talent your time your resources your energy your skill sets your mental capacity as a living sacrifice uh, holy and pleasing to God because uh, this is your true and proper worship uh, because giving barely enough uh, is simply not enough because uh, if you want it all then you got to give it your all as a church family we will embark on some much needed plant improvements can you commit to giving it your all as I close once again I'm going to invite you to join me but this time in God's pocket if you would stand for those who we <laughs> you see beloved in God's hokey pokey you put your whole self in because you're offering your bodies as a living sacrifice you take your whole self out the world because you want to be holy and pleasing to God you're gonna put your whole self in because you're not gonna conform to the patterns of this world and you're gonna shake it all about because you're gonna stir up the gift of God that's already in you you're gonna do the hokey pokey you're gonna turn yourself around you're gonna renew your mind because that's what it's all about that you may prove what is that God and acceptable and the perfect will of God just remain standing this is what I want you to realize that Jesus he didn't sacrifice just a toe that Jesus um, he didn't sacrifice just a foot <laughs> that Jesus um, he didn't sacrifice uh, just an arm 
and Jesus uh, he didn't sacrifice uh, just a leg uh, but beloved Jesus uh, was committed uh, because on an old uh, rugged cross uh, he sacrificed his life uh, so that you may have life uh, and have it abundantly Jesus was fully committed 